What's going on everyone? John here with Mock Motorsport and today we are headed to the track in the Miata and I can't wait. Now you've probably heard me mention this track before in some of my previous videos. Toronto Motorsports Park, it's kind of my home away from home track. What I love about this track is that it's a short course, it's technical, but most importantly it's only about 35 minutes from where I live, which makes it super convenient. The other thing I love about this course is that they open it up for open lapping days almost regularly throughout the week and weekends and evenings for very little cost. You can't go wrong with that. So when I don't have an overly busy day, instead of booking a tee time, I head to the track. I'm not much of a golfer and I much prefer to be at the track. So I can't wait to get there. Again, being only about 35 minutes from my house makes it super convenient. Pay my fee, get on the track, use it as much as I'd like until the sun goes down really can't ask for anything better than that. Now, this technically is the maiden voyage for the Miata. I have been there previously already with Pinnacle Driving Academy. We went for an introduction into motorsports or introduction into racing for novices, newbies, guys that are just coming into the sport. And I went there and took part of this event, not because I really needed to, but more or less because I just wanted to go and brush up a little bit on my skill and why not just go for some lapping time with an instructor? I mean, you can never assume you know everything because I learned a couple of things from my good buddy and instructor, John Silva, who was able to give me some pointers into hopefully being able to better my lap time at that track. And I can't wait to exercise some of the things that I've learned there. So today we are heading there in hopes that I'm gonna be able to improve upon my time. Now, when I went there for the driving academy, it really was difficult to set a flyer there at that time. You had a track full of a bunch of novices that really didn't know what they were doing and no discredit to them whatsoever, they're learning. So you're not really able to have a you know free run, so to speak. Plus, they had set up a bunch of cones for them to find the quote unquote optimum line, which is not necessarily the optimum line, especially if you've been there before and you know the short way around the apex, so to speak. So I'm heading there today in hopes that I'll have a relatively clean track in the sense that we won't have too many people out there today. And if there are, hopefully they're a little more experienced. So they'll leave some gaps and allow point buys and all that other good stuff in hopes that we can set a baseline for the Miata. Where does the Miata sit? I have no idea. I mean, when I drive it around town, I kind of have an idea as to where it is. And in my mind, I'm like, well, this has got to be at least similar in terms of, you know, anywhere between the Del Sol and the S2000 and somewhere where my BRZs were. So that being said, it's kind of really tough to, to say. Uh, when I look at other folks who have been at that track in bone stock Miatas, like my friend Dave Pratt, who was able to do, I believe, a 126 flat or maybe a 126.5 or something of that nature. And then Mark from Savage Geese was there as well uh, with the straight pipes, and he was able to run a benchmark of about 126.5 or 7 and around that point. So again, in a bone stock Miata, that is what I'm aiming for. Now, I may not be as skilled as them, or maybe I am. I don't know. So we'll have to see exactly how we're going to be able to do and I'm hoping that at the very least I'll be able to do a 127 modestly and if I can do that I'll be happy there's only one problem before I was headed to the track for the last event I had the stock BBS wheels on this vehicle and lo and behold courtesy of you know the fine folks of Hamilton Ontario who do not maintain their roads very well um, and for those of you who live in the area, you'll know what I mean. Unfortunately, I hit a fairly large crater, and I mean crater, not a pothole, with one of my wheels, my right rear wheel, dipped into this thing, and it bent the lip. Now, fortunately, enough that it was, not enough that it, it lost any air, it still held air in the tire, but there was a very audible wobble that was coming from that wheel. Not so much present in, in terms of shake, but it was very audible and I could definitely hear something was wrong. When I got back home and I limped the car home, got the vehicle up on jacks, much to my displeasure, the wheel was bent. And unfortunately, these BBS wheels are not cheap. I've already had a couple of estimates done and I'm really hoping that the city of Hamilton is going to make good on their policy and they will repair the damages. But for the record, here in Canada, 
one of those BBS wheels are about $1,680 each. Now, some of you might say, well, why would you want to even replace the wheel? Who cares? They're the stock wheels. And I've already replaced the wheels, truthfully. Uh, but I like those wheels. They look good on the car. They came with the car. They were a part of a bespoke package to the car. So I kind of feel like even if I just use them as rollers to roll the vehicle around in storage, I still want to keep those wheels. So I do want them replaced and I'm hoping we'll get them replaced. And who knows, maybe I'll get another set of wheels in addition to the wheels I already have. So this isn't going to be a stock baseline run for what it's worth. This is basically going to be a stock Miata with the exception of some 17 by 8 uh, Koenig Hypergrams, I believe. I believe they're Hypergrams with a set of Advan 8009s. So I have definitely noticed that the grip has, in, <laughs> has increased dramatically. The stock Potenza S001s, wow, they are not very good at all. However, they do lend to the playful nature of this car and do allow the vehicle to slip and slide around. And when I was at my first autocross, it was very evident of that. And yes, they did slide around. However, that being said, I definitely don't want to experience that on an open track. It's one thing on a closed small parking lot for an autocross, but at the track, I really want this vehicle to stick to the ground as best as possible. So that being taken into consideration, I don't really have a true baseline in stock form. So again, I'm hoping for a 127, even with the tires that I have on the vehicle right now. I think if I can do a 127, I would be pretty content with that. And again, if we do better, I'm certainly not gonna complain. In the back of my mind, I would love to hit a 125, and I think the car set up the way it is, bone stock, with these wheels and tires, is capable of it with the right driver. And I'm hoping today I can be the right driver. If not, we're gonna to work towards improving that. So let's get over to the track, have some fun, and hopefully in the next video, you'll see me setting a couple of good flyers. All right, guys, here we are at TMP, coming down the front straight into turn one. The goal here is to get to about 155 kilometers an hour as we approach turn one into the second straight here. Now, I apologize, a bunch of my GoPro files became corrupt and I lost a bunch. So this is all I was able to salvage. We are now coming into turn two, clipping the apex here over the curb, down into second gear, getting the car to rotate real nice so we are nice and tight on turn three. Coming into turn four, again, we want to create some rotation in the car, brake hard, rotate, now into turn five, leading into turn six over here, up into third gear, down a gear now, and we are clipping hard to go into this apex. Unfortunately, I overshot it by a margin, and we are heading down the back straight here into turns seven and eight, I believe. We are clipping both sides of the curbs there. Again, back in the second gear, rotating the car, using as much road as possible, and then back into this. You want to get a little tighter into this apex. Unfortunately, I was not using all the curb on the way out full throttle down here don't lift come in nice and tight and then we are starting to approach the second to last now the last corner and you want to go into this a little bit tighter i avoided it deliberately because there's a bit of a, a dip there and i didn't want to unsettle the car and there we have it there's a lap around tmp for a best time of me of the day of the 127.6 and this lap i did a 128.2 Alright guys, there's a lap around TMP in my ND2 Miata. I hope you enjoyed watching just as much as I enjoyed driving. This car is a ton of fun and I'm so upset that I've been neglecting this chassis for so many years and honestly, if you're looking for a modern day S2000, you really can't go wrong with the ND chassis. It is amazing. The MX-5 Miata is a fantastic car and I finally understand why it is the answer. There you have it. So unfortunately, like I mentioned in the audio there, we did have some corrupt data on my iMac and on my GoPro and I was unable to bring over all the video. However, the only video that I was able to salvage was one of my fastest laps. My fastest lap being a 127.6 and that one being a 128.2. And I was consistently doing 
low 128s the entire day. So I'm really, really pleased with that outcome. Now again, I wanted to do a baseline run with the car bone stock, including the OEM BBS wheels and the Potenza S001s, but due to an unfortunate mishap, hitting a crater or a pothole here in Hamilton. I damaged the BBS wheel and unfortunately was unable to use them for this day. However, we may do with the Koenig Hypergrams in a 17 by eight, along with the Yokohama Advan 8009s, which by the way, if you're looking for a great performance summer tire, you really can't go wrong with this tire. If you're looking for a good enduro type tire that you can literally drive on the street and then to the racetrack, Amazing, I would highly recommend this tire. Does it provide as much all out grip as my AO 52s that I've used previously? No, however, it does provide a lot more predictability. You can feel a lot more in the steering end of things as well. I found that the AO 52s albeit would give you the most amount of grip for about three or four laps. They really didn't give you a lot of feedback in the steering wheel. I found them to be very vague, whereas in these 8009s seem to be a lot more crisp and I just knew where my steering inputs were at any given time. So I feel that there's a little bit more to improve on this car. However, in almost stock form, this is an absolutely rocket ship around the track. You could drive it flat out 10 tenths and you are gonna have so much fun. What are my conclusions and takeaways? Well, I think the platform and the chassis overall is fantastic. With a little bit of upgrades, you can take a bone stock car and make it something very competitive at the track. Yes, the suspension does tend to sway and wallow a lot, which was not necessarily confidence inspiring. However, once you start to get used to the way the car rotates, you make it work to your advantage as I did. And you do find a little bit of a comfortable rhythm after a few laps around the track. Is it the most ideal? No, but can you make it work? Absolutely. I think this platform with change of brake fluid, better, a little bit more of an aggressive pad compound, obviously some tires, and you've got a really good platform here that can be very competitive in different events, especially if you're looking to compete in a stock class with very little to no modifications. This car is actually reasonably quick around the track. Now we've got a bunch of stuff planned for this and I can't wait to start doing the improvements on this vehicle because although we've got a pretty good overall vehicle to begin with, we do want to upgrade the pad compound to something that is going to provide a little more initial bite and have a little more thermal capacity as the OEM pads, although they were good for about two to three laps, they did start to fade away as we were getting a little bit later in the lapping session. Now I didn't lose brake pedal and I certainly didn't get a squishy pedal, but I was getting a lot of glazing on the pads and they were starting to get a little too hot. As far as the OEM tires are concerned, well, I mean, it goes without saying that the S001s aren't at the level of adhesion that something a little stickier would be like a good 200 treadwear tire. And I think, you know, as far as the suspension is concerned, you could probably get away with doing a, a set of sway bars to eliminate a little bit of body roll to control the motion of the body. However, again, like I said, if you can get comfortable with the amount of roll this vehicle produces naturally, you can make it work to its advantage and you get, you get used to it. It's not ideal, but you do get used to it. However, we've got a lot of other stuff planned for it, which includes removing that suspension, the good old roly-poly suspension. So in any event, thanks for watching, guys. I really appreciate you tuning in. And as always, leave me a like, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video.